Hello everyone, my name is Korazar, and welcome back to the Incomplete Guide to Star Sector. We are once again here over Hesperus Station, and I have spent a little bit of time, it's been, I don't know, a few months or so I guess, kind of flying around doing some odds and ends missions for the church, and a couple of things for our colonies, and if you take a close look at our rep with them, it's better, but it's not back to positive numbers yet. So I don't think our buddy is going to let us through. Mr. Excubitor Orbis, whatever his name was. Now, I was kind of silly because I realized that there are other options for getting rep or for getting to this particular site that we need to go to, the shrine. And I should have remembered to go to the dockside bar. Because here you can find someone bribable in local traffic control. Which lets you bypass the Excubidor. I don't know if that does anything bad for your rep with him or with the Lytic Church in general though. So I think I'm going to avoid it in lieu of another thing we can do. And that is, hey, uh, hey Bishop Governor, I've got some AI cores. They're very, very naughty. I want you to punish them real hard. Punish these AI cores, just throw them in a furnace. And yeah, sure, they're going to give us a paltry 20,000 credits, but look at how many rep we get, or how much rep we get. Let's take, let's take 10 out. Bam! Instantly from suspicious to favorable. Wow, look at that. Hey... Gideon Oak. You told me to find redemption. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes, he says. And the wrinkle of the smallest smile in the Persian sector appears by his mouth. It probably is the smallest smile. He isn't even capable. A long pause. I shall order traffic control to give you permission to land, Captain. The Excubitor Orbis says finally. May your spirit find that for which it searches. Uh, wait, that's it? <laughs> and he's already hung up. Okay. Well, now we finally get to go to the final Ledic Shrine. Traffic control gives you its blessing, so to speak, and your shuttle begins its descent to the cold and unforgiving surface of Hesperus. The planet is riven by glaciers like a network of scars and the battered hide of a fossilized monster. The flight path takes your shuttle into a great canyon of canyons filled with a chaos of ice and stone. The shuttle banks into an off-branch. The ridges of dark rock loom larger. Now and again you spot the crumbling remains of industry, and among them the occasional lights of a knight-chartered enterprise or monastic community. Around one last turn of the canyon, the shrine complex appears. A bright spire habitats, towers and masts, rising from the misty remains of a titanic atmospheric processing plant. Your trained eye spots the likely positions of heavy weapon emplacements, Two clean cliff faces at convenient angles, the suspiciously level floors of certain hanging valleys. The landing bay antechamber is a Baroque Gothic militant display of post industrial salvage. Dead suits of power armor stand at attention, weapons proudly displayed. Glowing between rivet encrusted arches are scenes of battle and martyrdom, done up in mosaic panes formed of fractured gems. Structural diamond and colorful lenses recovered from mining lasers or reactor inspection ports. The gallery is filled with parties of Ledic pilgrims, pilgrims dressed in traditional handweave meeting with shrine attendants. Let's ask to visit the shrine. At your request, the attending subcurate leads you through a brief ceremonial hand washing, then down a long hallway or gallery. The flow of the curate's robe doesn't quite touch the floor. A welded field of armored plates weathered into intricate patterns by the varied atmospheres of a score of worlds on which the knights have fought and died. Niches along the walls are occupied by empty helmets. The shrine is a grand tomb set in an enormous air shaft. The industrial viscera has been transformed into a baroque sculpture of thousands of edged weapons aligned like feathers of a wing, rays of gleaming serrated metal boldly thrust in killing arcs through the vast space. In the center, surrounded by a galaxy of flickering candles, lie the lead-lined caskets of a squad of martyred knights. 
the manner of their deaths, the subcurate explains in reverent whispers, left their bodies unidentifiable and infused with radioactive material which would kill a direct observer even to this day. You are left in a prayer niche to contemplate the horror. In the next niche over, a young knight initiative gives you a challenging look. His head is freshly shaved. He must be very new to the order. You're not a knight, he says quietly, making a show of looking over your uniform. Nor one of us. Not really. Are you here, spacer? I came here to perhaps find that out. I like to be somewhat circumspect about my particular proclivities as far as Ludic Church goes. Your introspection seems to throw the knight off, the initiate off. You can see the thought work across his face. Are you making fun of me? But it is quickly dismissed, and you are found under not a threat. He nods brusquely, then returns his gaze to the lead coffins. I am supposed to contemplate their sacrifice. Horrible way to die, like that. You're a... He glances at your garb again. Spacer, right? Ever seen that happen to anyone? Yes. He stares at you for a moment, then slowly returns his gaze to the radioactive martyrs. Subdued chanting, warped by the strange geometry of this cultic industrial space, blends with the air cyclers. The candles burn clean and bright, gleaming off the multitude of bladed facets adorning every surface of the shrine's interior, a monument to sacral bloodshed. And that is the finale, finally finale, <laughs> Of the Pilgrim's Path quest. We have finally gotten to all of the different Lytic Shrines. Now, this should, in some way, shape, or form, lead directly into another quest called Knight Errant. Oops, I didn't mean to go back. Goodbye. I'm not sure where we have to go to start the next quest, but I thought it was sort of right here. I'm not actually sure. Let's maybe fly around to Tartessus and see if there's anything we can do there to kickstart this quest. Oh, hello. Large contact on radar. What are you? A falcon. Eh, whatever. A little bit of cleanup here. Wouldn't want you to run into the space dust and, you know, shred your hull. Right, guys? Right. Exactly. My goodness. Oops. Oh, well. Uh, let's see. I think they got this. Hmm. I don't see how we are meant to actually go and start this quest. So I'm going to go look that up and wow, we could make a lot of bank selling stuff here. But yeah, I'm going to go and look that up and see what we can do to start this quest. So I'll see, I'll leave you in just a moment. All right, folks, welcome back. I kind of goofed a little bit. We're not technically done with the whole quest yet because we have to go back to Gilead. And that's what should kick off the next mission, or next, yeah, next mission. So let's go there. And before we do actually kick that new quest off, I do want to talk a bit about what I did between episodes. And one of the things that I did that was super important was I have fixed our rep with everybody, basically. Let's go to the rep screen. Here we go. So everyone but the pirates and the Ludic Path are now at least neutral toward us. We have neutral hegemony, even though we had a commission with them. I don't quite get that part. Even the Persian League, because over here in the Maya Sura system, there was a pirate bounty, a system bounty. So I went and just hung out and killed a bunch of the small fleets for, I don't know, 15 minutes. And bam, our rip went from like negative 70 up to now a positive number. So that really helped do good things to our colonies because your reputation with different factions heavily affects your accessibility. We were rocking a minus 40% due to hostilities with other factions previously and now at a mere minus 12 and that's just for Ludic Path 
and the pirates. So now, basically all of our colonies have no problems exporting all their goods, even though our accessibility is only, well, 60% from a spaceport, plus whatever other bonuses we get. So that's pretty awesome. And we are actually now able to get along financially without any commission. We're getting about eh, 35 to 50,000 credits a month or so. And that is pretty cool. So let's slide on in here to Hesperus' DMs, and we're going to shuttle down to complete the pilgrimage. Deorbiting to the surface of Gilead is overseen by the Knights of Lud. Their traffic control is characteristically strict. Your shuttle queue is behind a flotilla of lumbering transports and haulers. The face of Gilead is filled with green continents, seeded with earth life by spore ship and climate stabilized by Eridani Utopia's vast terraforming machines. Then Lud came and the faithful turned the world into a garden wilderness of astounding richness. It is a gem of the Persian sector. Your shuttle receives a ping from traffic control. Permission to descend. The landing bay, one of a score of allocated outsiders, is packed with parties of Ludic pilgrims dressed in traditional handweave led by robed attendants. One such stony-faced attendant meets your shuttle on the pad and with a double glance at a discreet data pad rapidly stowed in voluminous, voluminous robes, invites you to follow them. I am blessed, Captain Corazar, the attendant says, to invite you to complete the pilgrim's path on this day. How do you know of this? The faithful must know keep watch for what is coming. That's uh, I think a typo there. The attendant says with a strange look, then almost, but not quite, smiles. I mean not to sound so arcane, it is merely that our church has endured hard times, and may yet again. You think hard times will come? I pray that they do not, the attendant says. We prepare for if they do. It is a smaller path you are led down, not the highway of humanity for the main shrine. This is a smaller, secondary shrine in the lee of a crag dominated by the immense forest. Pilgrims are offered tea and water and ritual washing. The air is filled with sweat incense and the scent of pine. A thrum of odd chanting distorted by the breeze lifts and wanes by the whims of the air currents. You see shrine curates blessing pilgrims. It is soon your turn. And now we got that one completed. Okay, there we go. <laughs> hey, we even have a better rep with him now. That's great. The curate casts scented drops and says the words, though it is almost a blur. It is strange to have come so far for this. Around your river of pilgrims flows. They've found meaning in the journey they've made between the shrines, following the path of their prophet Lud. It is almost unbelievable how much has been built on the words of one person who, blessed or cursed by circumstance, bent the arc of history across the face of the domain and the collapse. Looking upon the crowds, the pointed arches, the trees beyond, what would Lud make of this? Let's go ahead and leave. You return to your shuttle, taking a final breath of air rich with the exhalations of both the greenery and the mass of humanity. As your pilot swaps takeoff pings with traffic control, they pause at an unusual set of nav instructions which are forwarded to your now re retrieved data pad. You are being directed to a landing which serves as a huge monastic complex, some sort of church administrative center. The local data sphere is not forthcoming on details. It's difficult to say if this is a security measure or pious neglect. Let's follow the route. At the landing pad, you are met by a solemn Ludic knight. A knight initiate stands a few bases behind, trying to match the ease and calm of their superior. Captain Kurazar, the knight says, let me speak welcome on behalf of the Church of Galactic Redemption. I extend to you an invitation from the Reverend Archcurate Despis to meet and share refreshment. The knight stands aside, motioning with Gauntlet to invite you to walk toward the administrative structures. What's this about? I know not. It is my duty to extend this hospitality on behalf of the Reverend Archcurate, the knight says. Then with a thought adds, You are accused of no heresy or secular crime. Your safety is my duty. Okay, we'll walk with him. You are led by the night through gardens and the soaring arcades of the Ludic Church architecture, half-remembered dreams of Gothic cathedrals given flight by the material science of the domain. 
It might be thought impertinent to mention this aspect of the construction, of course. The night initiate follows behind, footsteps echoing between arched portals over slate tiles flecked with glittering pirate like stars in the night. Does every successful pilgrim to meet the arch curate? Oops, almost misclicked. The knight looks back at you, half cape fluttering over carefully secured weaponry, with an expression that, that yours is a stupid question. The tone of the reply is permanently neutral, however. No, Captain. The Reverend Arch Curate requested a meeting with you specifically. Okay. You pass through wooden doors and halls carpeted in designs of, fo of foliage and fauna, presumably of old earth. A fawn, a whale, hawks, and dragons circling a blue sky wreathed with leaves of ivy, oak, and palm. You know, I don't recall dragons. I think I'd remember if we had dragons here, but whatever. The Arch Curate's office appears relatively austere at first glance, but as your eyes adjust, hand-carved wooden paneling emerges, their faces packed with small plants and figures, both human and animal. The room is situated to overlook a private atrium garden. A shaft of sunlight illuminates flowers and catches the softly trickling drops of a fountain. Your Excellency, the knight calls out too loudly for the space and bows to the figure within. The arch curate Draspis turns toward you, closing a thick book. Come before me, Captain, she says. I would share with you a pot of tea, and my hospitality. Knight Elathan, oh, wow. Knight Elanthus, there we go. You have my thanks, and may leave us be. A metal carafe with a long handle steams on a heating element, a pot and two simple cups beside. Sure, I have some tea. I do like tea myself. She takes the handle of the of the craft of boiling water, and without looking, gaze still unfocused, fills the teapot. She is quite blind, you realize. I'm going to be circumspect, and we'll just let the tea steep. You made pilgrimage to the holy shrines of Lud, a taxing act to which the faithful aspire. Yet you also take pain to keep distance from the church. To hold nothing holy. She picks up a teacup and taps its side idly. I have not received you here to admonish or proselytize. If a struggle bedevils your soul, or if it is deaf to the songs of creation, that matter is for your own prayer and meditation. The office I am entrusted with, too, has, off has need for the service of an actor of means and ability. More quietly, her voice gone low and rough, a hammer. The arch curate places her teacup back on the desk, exactly where it was before, then pours tea into her cup, and then into yours. So you want me to be your hammer? No. My hammer is, she nods in your direction, a humbler being by far than you. But he requires aid in his quest, and for that he might well serve. She sips some tea. Do you understand that I speak not entirely of war and wrath? A hammer may strike subtly, even quietly, if aimed with skill, wisdom, and piety. I'm just saying that. You remind me of Provost Baird. Do you insult or laud me, I wonder, she says. Adahita Baird is a powerful woman, intelligent and proud. She also makes herself habit of knocking upon the doors of demons. She sits back, cradling her teacup. Or, I should say, rather, she sends others to knock in her place. The arch curate waves a hand dismissively. I hold on to your work for her against your character. If I re may return your Janus-faced compliment, what you have done for Baird may even prove your more s you more may even prove more your suitability for what is in my mind. Boy, these are long sentences. I mean, what do you want? What is your goal? The faith has many enemies, both within and without the church. She says slowly, "Some know what evil they do." Others do not. They must be set right. I would labor to do good, as Lud taught us, and by all means available, as Lud also taught us. In doing good, I serve this office, and to greater purpose, I serve the vision Lud handed down to us. The arch curate carefully puts her hands together, not unlike a position of prayer. Captain, allow me to put the matter to you directly. My agent is a novice of the lights of Lud. 
He was assigned to my office in order to achieve his knighthood. He infiltrated a cell of heretical militants affiliated with the ill-named Ludic Path. I have not heard from him in some time. Her voice, usually somewhere between confident and sardonic, almost breaks in his last few words. He is important to you. She proceeds, pointedly ignoring your statement. If you accept this task from my office, my assistant will provide you with the identity files to aid you in finding my agent. You will also be given a modest retainer to fund your efforts, and more if... when you find him. You need not answer now. Pray on the matter, or ponder, if that is how you would name it. She turns back to the book she had opened when you entered. May Providence favor you with a blessed path. I pray it returns to me with an answer in the affirmative. I have already decided. With such haste, she says. You need not play act enthusiasm to impress me. My opinion has always held that decisions of great import should be given ample time to sleep. Gift me now with silence, she says as she opens her book with one hand and places the other upon its open face. So there we go. So we can't start the quest just yet, although I think we might be able to start it now. Let's see. So you speak first with some kind of secretary who politely persuades you to wait patiently. After a short time, the image of the Archcurate Jaspis appears. She makes little effort to look toward Com's feet as she putters around her office. We are blessed by the day, she says. I have given your proposal some thought. I will find your missing agent. Okay, so we can start it now. We just had to go back to the uh, comms. Okay. She closes her eyes and bows her head, hands held together. You would swear she is saying a quiet prayer. Her blind eyes open, and she looks at you across the comlink. His name is Jethro Bornanu. Bornanu, really? <laughs> of course it is. She says. He is a late initiated novice of the Ludic Knights. My assistant will provide you with an identity file. Novice Bornanu has infiltrated a cell of heretical militants affiliated with the so-called Ludic Path. I have not heard from him in some time. It's been far too long, she adds quietly. And we have the IID file. What was his last known position? Chalcedon, in the Kamari Kandam system. He was to join some inner circle of the path. He was to meet with a leader or some manner of recruiter. Nothing have I heard since. For a moment, the arch curate looks upward, and her lips move soundlessly before she returns to face you. If heretics must die to secure his release, she says, then do what must be done. Their blood will be washed away by that of the innocent, the seas and rivers that these pathers have spilled in the course of their heretical crusade. God will be your judge. You'll be paid, of course. My officer will provide you with an advance of 25,000 credits, with an additional 50,000 credits upon resolution. That's a... Yep, deep pockets there, church. All right. Let's see... Is this about Brother Cotton? You would say she gives you a hard look with her blind eyes. I cannot answer wholly yes or no, she says. At one point, it might have been. Now I am not so sure. All right, let's, uh, can you tell me more about Born Anew? He's a gentle soul, though rough treated. He was in the house of penitence when his case was brought before me some years ago. The archcurate turned slightly as if taking in a vision from memory. Prison, you would call it. It is my duty, more than simply charity, to review petitions of absolution as my schedule permits. I found in Jethro a bright mind, contrite and eager to learn anew. His crimes were not so great, and his part due more to his desire to please his associates than some inborn malice. I made his repentance my cause for a time, and by its end he took on a new name, and he asked, How could he serve? Uh, then I will find Warren anew. I pray that you do. May a friendly star light your path. Archcrate Jaspis signs off, and a shy novice opens a line to transfer your advance payment. They say a quiet, blessed be your day, before crossing the link. Closing the link. Well, we got our pennies, I guess. And... We have some... Ah, that's a pretty good payout for a little bit of work, but nope, not today. So, let's go to Chalcedon, or Chalcedon. Not quite sure how it's pronounced. 
And we're going to go right on in here. Off we go. Okay, here we are, and they're not bothering us, that's fine. I'm cool with that. So here we are at Chalcedon, or Chalcedon. I should look that up, how that's uh, actually pronounced. Let's, ooh, let's stop and talk to the Mammoth Paper Book. Uh, I don't need either of those. So this is what makes your militaries produce larger fleets. And this is a pretty good blueprint, but not really worth a story point. Though we do have eight now, finally. Later, dude. So, weathered-looking woman. I haven't seen this before. Let's see what this is. She turns out to be the master of a farming commune, and she has come to town to find distributors for their product. She's got 210 units of food that has to be moved as soon as possible, and if you buy it all today, you get an undermarket price of 12 credits per unit. Uh, no, nah, I'm good. Yeah, that's just that's silly. So I think... Yeah, so we can either try to chat up the leaders here. Which I, I'm pretty sure they will shut us down pretty hard. Let's... You know what? Let's see. They don't like us, though. I feel like these sort of inquiries are too direct. And I feel like that's going to actually hurt us. So let's let's just go to the bar and we'll ask around. Find someone well connected to bribe for information on Born Anew. You take your time drinking tea and asking around, eventually finding yourself at a table with a mammon's man, a free agent who interfaces between Pathers and the outside world, while despised by both. Well aware that he will sell any any useful information you let slip to Pathers or Pather Hunters, you say I'm looking for someone who recruits for the path. Looking for? He raises his eyebrows. There are many ways of looking for a person, you know. Some look to talk, some to deal. He pours another dram of a foul black market distillate into a teacup. The fumes shimmer as they evaporate. Some look to kill. He eyes you for a moment, holding the teacup, then pours it down his throat, coughs, and slams the cup back on the table. I mentioned because that... that would cost more. I'm after information, not killing. It's just talk. Good, good. The Mammonite laughs and holds up a finger for the proprietor's attention. Another round, then points it at you. You're paying. I can set up a meeting, and you... and a friend... He gives you a look. Not a good friend. Not too close. Just a talking friend. Good business, you know. 5,000 credits. You're a big captain with a big fleet. It's nothing, yes? Sure. You transfer the credits to the sticky data pad offered by your new friend. I'll make inquiries and you will wait and come back after one day for a good answer. He pounds a drum roll on the table and laughs as a pot of tea arrives. Tonight we drink and celebrate. Let's keep the party going. Oh boy. You drink with the Mammonite, who indeed makes for a good drinking partner. He has many stories and matches you for tales of scrapes with irate pathers, pirates, and patrols. The Mammonite raises a hand to summon the proprietor again. Another pot of tea? Why not? One pot turns into two, then three. The night spins, a blur of sound and the light. Another drink? Bottoms of tea house lanterns, doubling, tripling. Need to find the lab. You are wrapping up your visit to the charmingly quaint facilities when you are grabbed from behind, a dark hood pulled over your head. You are dragged through a doorway, somewhere with dank, close air, then out into the night. There's a thrum of raindrops on awnings. Uh oh. Sharp, low words are exchanged between your kidnappers, and muffled cursing from beside you. Sounds like the Mammonite. You're pretty sure you're not as, not as worse for the drink as he is. Pretty sure. Hard to tell with your head in a bag. So we can very drunkenly draw our starm, <laughs> sidearm, 
That's it. Draw your sled arm. I think we'll just... You know what? I, I, you know, they've got more guns. Ooh. Ow. Wow. A gunshot. Barely muffled by the sack on your head. Collapse your eardrums. You don't hear the Mammonite cursing anymore. The cold shock of dead of dread sobers you. More low talking. You are dragged a short distance, then lifted to your feet. We should speak face to face. You. Let the good brother see. The hood comes off. Ah, it's not Brother Cotton like I thought it might be. It is Wrestling Sedge. Wrestling and rough parents. Been told you've been asking questions, the man says with a cheap smile. A tooth is missing. Another cracked to a point. He smells of mildew and sweat. I'm Sedge. He graciously waves a hand to show you the dismal alley you find yourself in, toward the stumped form sitting in a puddle of his own blood. Welcome to my path. You're the recruiter. Is that what I am? He pauses a moment, then nods. It is more people find me. Those who seek the path. The mask of casual ease draws away to show you the ice-cold, self-assured fervor in his eyes. I judge if their path leads true. If it does, he shrugs, remember the casual business of building an interstellar network of terrorism. Why'd you kill him? That? Said it looks down as if it a stone on the ground. That got careless. That forgot that one does not speak easily of the path. The path is sacred. It does not belong in the mouth of the decadent heathen. His eyes flick downward again. Like that. Hmm. That led me to you. Will you shoot me as well? No. He smiles again. You are welcome here with blessed peace and the hospitality of my people. Hospitality, yeah, okay. I'm looking for a man called Jethro Bornanu. Hmm. Said looks away, making a show of thinking it over. No. Do not recall it, Jethro. The pooling blood is caught by a small stream of runoff and begins to wash a red streak down the alley. I'll show a picture of him. Recognize him? You slowly draw your tripod and activate the Jethro Bornanu file. There was a hollow from before he left. Sedge leans over to examine it. Ah, he speaks without hesitation. Yes, I remember now. He went to Mazalot. Mazalot? Why? Sedge considers his words for a moment, sucking spittle through his tooth gap. That man. His faith is true. Sedge swishes again, but he did not know his path. Sedge stands back suddenly, looking away down the alley. That a man could believe, truly, and not know his path? I did not like to see that. I told him he had no place with us. He speaks without meeting your eyes. I was told he worked for a time, then bought passage to Mazalot. I hope they see what I saw too, that he is unfit. You would swear that Sedge is upset. No more questions, he spits. We are done. He walks away. You spot your sidearm on the ground, next to the Mammonite's cooling body. Hmm. Watch him leave. Sedge disappears down a side alley, and his thugs with him. You are left in the dipping alley with a corpse. I think it should be dripping alley. Okay. So, we need to go to Mazalot. I think we're pretty well done here. Of course, they do have a lot of cheap stuff here. Let's see, Mazalot. Eh, I think we're good. Let's head off to Mazalot. That should be here in Zagan. All right. I'll see you all there. Oh, oh dear. Hi, guys. We are being hailed by the Ludic Path fleet. Okay. We'll take the request. The comlink opens with a shutter, error codes flashing from ancient protocols begrudgingly converted to current standards. The Pather Captain stares you down. Corazar, he begins. I will cut you from the sky, burn your fleet, and scatter your ashes to the blessed vacuum. He smiles grimly. 
This is where your path ends, for you've asked forbidden questions and searched for forbidden things. So it looks like we can get out of the confrontation by pretending that we are working for Cotton. But I'm not super concerned about this fleet. <laughs> not at all, in fact. Uh, let's see. You demand what your PD fleet cannot impose. Flee now. Yeah, these guys are toast. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. Also, you will note that I did swap out our AI-controlled onslaught for our human-controlled legion. I just... I like the sort of extra firepower of the fighters more, so... Let's get all of our captain ships out there, and I remember now that some of these, or one of these guys, needs to level up, but oops. It'll be for later. And then let's bring out some cruisers. So that, that gives us basically no... There we go. It's gonna say no fighters. We do want some fighters, because... They're just really handy to have. Let's do that. We'll do that post up here. Let's do our usual stacking. Come with me and you. Go capture that. <laughs> See if you can do it. All right, let's get into this combat here a little bit. We're going to trash you next. Like I said. Nighty night. Boom. That's right. You mess with the best, you die like all the rest. No thank you. Don't really need that. Oh my. Yeah, let's get your shields up. I don't think you're going to last a whole lot longer. Pretty sure you're going to go down right about now. Yep. Okay. Let's clear that mess up. Uh, let's go. Do you need help? I think you do. Yeah, your flux is high and you're being a really big wimp about dumping your flux. Nudge that out of the way. Didn't really need both those uh, antimatter blasts, but hey, whatever. Now, I thought they had a second... I could have sworn they had a second capital ship, but I guess not. All right. Kill them, boys. I'll be kind of surprised if I get to kill anything else this battle. <laughs> Hello. Oh, he's dead. Gonzo. All right. Uh, yep. I think we're pretty well cleaned up here. Oh, we still can't leave, though. Interesting. Now we can. Okay. Just get that done. Oh, they only had the one. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, that was a really weak fleet to uh, come and try to uh, deal with us. Hey, there we go. Cool. Let's level up our officer here. Brian Hanta. Hanta. 
Hey, you. Okay, so... Ooh, what are our options here? Impact mitigation, damage control... Oh, that's a real shame. Let's see... Oh, you know what? No. This is actually not a shame. I was thinking we were looking at this guy, but no, we want to level up. Oh, both of them need level up. Yeah, okay. Oh, I forget which one was which. Uh-oh. Okay, you should be like that. Okay, there we go. Alright, so... Brian Hanta. I think we need to get rid of Brian Hanta because... He does not have the skills that I'm looking for. Which is a bit of a shame. You were doing so well, buddy. You were doing so, so well. Well, for now, let's give him... Heck, I don't even know. Uh, impact mitigation, sure, why not? But we'll need to dismiss him and pick up a new officer because this is the skill set that I want for our Tempests. I want Helmsmanship, I want Target Analysis, Gunnery Implants, Intro of Mastery, and Orden's Expertise, and since we do have eight skill points, story points, let's make Gunnery Implants Elite for the extra ECM. We have a second. Oh, Iskander wants to level up. Okay, so you... It kind of doesn't matter what you have, honestly. Although you know, combat endurance might be good. Hmm. Yeah, you know what? Combat Endurance is pretty good. Target Analysis is pretty good, but these guys don't really fight capitals or anything bigger than themselves, so I do think that having a bit of extra time on the field is probably better. Anybody else? Nope. We're good. Alright. Let's get up to where we're going. Okay, here we are. Our system bounty going on here, which is pretty cool. And we can... Ah, here we go. So we can find someone well-connected to bribe for information on Born Anew. You ask around about someone who might have connections with the path, keeping your language indirect. Spacers know that following local planetary rules and regulations is only really a game to be kept up. So you are... Only politely rebuffed, and in turn, politely turned down unwanted counteroffers about irrelevant opportunities. Finally, you hit upon someone who seems to give the right responses. You slide over for an, you slide over an extra drink, drink you were given to start the procedure off on the right foot. I am looking for someone. Having trouble finding the right path. He nods and deliberately lifts your drink, holds it up toward you in a subtle toast, then takes a sip. You may not be as lost as you think, he says. I'm in information technology. Less the tech, more the sales, you know. Distribution of useful information. He makes a show of examining the drink you gave him. This is nice to wet your throat, but I got a mighty thirst. Just info. Let's call it a thousand credits. A thousand credits and I will put you in contact with the Ludic Path, he says, to confirm the substance of the deal, and pokes the data pad from under his sleeve for your transfer confirmation. Let's do it. You touch the data pad, and its screen flashes to a badge of the Mazalot Unification Authority Municipal Security. The agent gives you a little smile. Captain Kurazar, by the power of Mazalot Unification Authority, you are charged with criminal conspiracy under the Interstellar Terrorism Statute of... He joins on in legalese watching the act. You consider your options. You suspect reprisals for dodging out of this entrapment scheme will be token at best. It feels like a credit rustling op to scam naive spacers more than any kind of serious serious investigation. This this might get us through. I wonder if this would would help at all too, or if that would just mess up Genzira Bay. Let's do agent. I am acting on behalf of an arch curate of the Church of Galactic Redemption. He didn't like that. 
Yeah? Well, good for Lud. The agent holds up his data pad, which blinks a flash at you for a quick hollow to register your crime. Maybe you can pay your fine with all those tithes you Luddites, Luddies collect from the little old grannies. And it is, another couple taps, 5,000 credits. I would think that the MUA would cooperate with a church investigation into Pather activity. Heads turn. The party at a neighboring table does a double take. The science now is a good time to pay the tab. The agent fixes you with his eyes and smirks coldly. I see what you're trying. The church doesn't run this, this polity. The league does. He stares at you unblinking, assessing. I'm going to stare. I got big ships in space. You stare down at the excavator orbits of Hesperus. A Munisec officer from Mazelot? He's nothing. A bilge roach before the dragon of Orion. Is that me? Am I the dragon of Orion? That's pretty cool. Your gaze sears like plasma. It tears the Munisec bully apart like a graviton beam cannon flashing across the blood and ash flecked volume of space battle. You've seen things he wouldn't believe. Unimaginable vastness, vacuum most terrible and cruel. He drops his eyes to his silly parking warden's data pad. Bashfully, he tucks it into a pocket while mumbling something about a misunderstanding and shuffles away. You stand alone. From a shadowy corner, a man smoking a burning narcotic stick catches your eye. We'll approach him. The man looks you over as you approach. Oh, I think this is actually just a bar mission. I didn't realize we were just back in the bar. Okay. He wants us to extract somebody from Nachiketa with 1,500 breeds. Now we're good. Okay, well. I think we might be a bit out of options here. Here we go. Tell you what, I think we're going to call it here. I'm going to do a little bit of research and make sure we're on the right path here. Yeah, get it? The right path. And then we'll pick up this quest, this mission, in the next episode. But I hope you've enjoyed the bit of story we're getting here. This story is, I believe, new to 0 0.96. And I really enjoy all the different elements that go into it and all the different twists and turns. And the fact that you get to kind of, like, leave your ship even if not quite in the same way as in the Princess of Percy quest that we did a couple episodes ago. But everyone, hope you enjoyed it. And as always, my name is Hazen Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.